one stone up. First you house with a John Fuel. He spoke one night of the, the debt he owed to a John Lee. So the John Lee had showed him the brightness of the world. And if he hadn't met a John Lee, who knows where he would have ended up. The statement points to the importance of what the Buddha called having admirable friends. People who show you that life isn't all just grabbing what you can before you die. There's something noble in human life. There's goodness out there, and we can develop goodness inside. As the Buddha once said, there's no other external factor that's more important than having admirable friends. To show you there is this brightness in life. We tend to think that the Buddha's teachings focus on the negative side of the world. There's that chant, we got the world is swept away, it does not endure, well, there's no shelter, there's no one in charge. Even newspaper writers are beginning to, to admit. There's a column I read today. There's someone that's saying, here's what globalization is all about. We're all connected and there's no one in charge. As if that were a surprise. And this is where continue. One has to pass on, <coughs> excuse me, one, one has to pass on, leaving everything behind. The world is a slave to craving. You look around, you can see a lot of the slaving to craving that goes on. And you hit the Buddha's first noble truth about suffering, which many people misinterpret in saying that life is suffering. He never said that. All he said is there is suffering. It's one, though, of four noble truths. Life also has the cause of suffering. It also has the end of suffering and the path to the end of suffering. That's the brightness of the world. It is possible to find an end of suffering through a path of, as the Buddha said, it's a noble path. Both in the sense that it leads to a noble truth of the end of suffering, and in and of itself, the activities you engage in on the path are noble activities. So it's important as we practice that we see that there is brightness in the world. It's not just in the path to the end of suffering. Any goodness we see in human beings is something that we should appreciate, because that gives us the energy to keep on doing good ourselves. This is why gratitude is an important virtue in the path, realizing that you owe your life to the sacrifices of your parents, your teachers, other people who have helped you. And it's important that you appreciate that. If you don't appreciate their goodness, it's hard for you to see the value of goodness. And if you don't see the value of goodness, it's hard for you to do it. Even when other people have harmed you, in one way or another, the Buddha said, look for their goodness. Even if it's just a little bit, you should focus on that. Because if you can't see their goodness, it's very hard for you to act in good ways to them, to treat them with kindness and compassion. If all you see are the, the bad 
qualities of human beings, their greediness and their selfishness and their thoughtlessness. It's very easy for you to get sucked into that whirlpool yourself, of being greedy and thoughtless. You need to focus on their good qualities. The image the Buddha gives is of someone coming across the desert. He sees a cow print in the dirt, and there's a little bit of water in it. And you're hot, saying that you're the person coming across the desert. You're hot, tired, trembling, thirsty. You need that water. And so you very carefully get down on your hands and knees, because you know if you took your hand and scooped it up, you'd muddy the water you couldn't drink it. So you get down and very carefully slurp it up straight from the cow print. Other people's goodness is that valuable. In this case, it's the goodness of a person who doesn't have much goodness. Even to that extent, you have to focus on it. If you're angry at somebody who really does have a lot of goodness, the Buddha said it's like coming across a desert, hot, tired, trembling, thirsty, and you come across a huge lake, cool water with trees on the banks. So you jump into the lake, swim around, drink your fill, cool off, and then sit under the shade of the tree. In both cases, notice your position. You need water. So you've got to focus on the water that other people give you. If it's only a little bit, you have to be very careful about focusing specifically on the goodness so you don't get distracted by the bad side. If someone with a lot of goodness will enjoy their goodness. Soak it up. Because that's what gives nourishment to your goodness. There are four qualities the Buddha says to look for in a a friend like this. The first is conviction. Conviction that your actions really do matter. This is the principle you want to learn from other people. That the choices you make really are important and the quality of your intention determines whether your actions are going to lead to happiness or not. You want to look for a person who believes in that. Because that person is more likely to be kind, generous in his or her actions. So conviction is the first thing you want to look for. The second one is generosity. Someone who sees the value of giving. Again, you benefit directly from that, that you become the the beneficiary of that person's gifts, but at the same time that that person sets a good example for you. The world isn't all about taking. Giving is what keeps human society alive. It also develops the qualities you need on the path. As the Buddha said, a person who's stingy cannot gain jhana. A person who's stingy can't gain any of the noble attainments. You have to see the value of generosity. At the very least, it sets a good example for inner relinquishment when you're able to let go of things outside, things that you don't really need, things that you can share with others. It helps you start reflecting on things inside the mind, your defilements that you tend to hold on to, or your unwillingness to forgive somebody. The best way to overcome stinginess, as the Buddha said, is to give a gift. find yourself feeling stingy, go ahead and give a gift to somebody. If you don't have anything material to give, well, give your forgiveness. It costs nothing and makes life a lot lighter. Of course, our sense of being wrongly injured by one person or another is something that for some reason we tend to hold to very dearly. But it's like that cobra in the the Thai folktale, the farmer comes along, 
in the cold morning, sees a cobra lying in the road, stiff with a cold, it can't move. So he has pity on the cobra, picks it up, puts it inside his shirt so the cobra can get warm, and then, of course, the cobra bites him. It's a good analogy for our sense of having been wronged by somebody else. We keep it warm. We feel sorry for ourselves. Of course, that sense of being wrongly injured by somebody, wrongly treated by somebody, is going to come around and bite us. So generosity is a quality to look for in friends and to appreciate in your friends and to copy, to emulate. Third quality is virtue. People have principles. They know there are certain things that are beneath them and they just won't do them. Certain things are harmful. They don't want to harm other people. They have a sense of shame and compunction. Shame has gotten a bad reputation here in the West. The sense of being ashamed of yourself. And in Buddhism, it's actually a positive virtue. And it's not a sense, sign of low self-esteem, it's a sign of high self-esteem. You value your virtue. You think of certain things that would go against your principles, and you'd be ashamed to do them. It's because you're proud, you have the pride that comes with your, your virtue. And it's not a bad kind of pride to have. Shame and its companion compunction, in other words, realizing that there are certain things, if you do them, are going to have bad consequences down the line. You just don't want to do them for that reason. As the Buddha said, these things protect the world. They help us to exercise restraint. So these are good qualities to look for in someone else, and to admire with the value in other people, and to learn how to emulate in your own behavior. The fourth quality is discernment, the ability to see where your actions are causing suffering and to figure out how to put an, an end to that kind of suffering, whether it's on the external level or on the internal level, learning to see suffering or stress when it arises being able to connect it to its causes. This ability starts with a simple question, what when I do it will lead to long-term wealth and happiness? As the Buddha said, this is how wisdom begins, how discernment begins. And then you look at your actions and see where are you actually causing stress and harm, because you realize happiness depends on your actions. And so we want to look and see. In what areas are you deluded? Areas where you don't think you're causing any harm, but you actually are. You want to ferret those out. In terms of what you do, say, think. That's the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of discernment. So these are the four qualities you want to look for in other people, to value in other people. Four qualities you want to look for in your friends, the people you associate with, the people you open your heart to. There are going to be a lot of other kinds of people in the world that you've got to associate with. But be very careful about who you open your heart to, who you emulate, who you take as your model. So it's good to be able to look for the goodness in other people, because your own goodness gets nourished. And you realize that the world isn't full of people just scrambling around, fighting one another. The Buddha's vision of the world before it went off into the forest was a fish and a puddle. The puddle was drying up, and the fish were desperate. There were less and less water, and there were lots of them, and they were fighting over this. 
over a decreasing amount of water. It gave him a strong sense of dismay. But fortunately, he realized that that wasn't the whole story of the world. There is goodness in the world. You take that as your nourishment. You realize there's a lot more to the world than just fighting over the dwindling resources. We are able to find happiness in another way, through developing noble qualities in our hearts. So when you see those qualities in other people, appreciate them. If the people who've been helping you show gratitude. by appreciating the little glimmers of brightness in other people's behavior, that you begin to see the brightness of the world, the real brightness that goes stronger as you get deeper and deeper into the practice. But it's this appreciation of other people that helps keep you going and gives you nourishment all along the way. 